I'm uh, Alan Busey, and I live at the very top of Deadwood, probably the most northwest dot on your map up there. Uh, and uh, I didn't notice anywhere on there ODFW uh, uh, signature guys this chain. They are part of the park. They are not part of this uh, response. Okay. Well, if I want to shoot a cat or if I want to hunt a, a, an elk, uh, I've you know, well, bear, I got to turn in ovary tracts, I got to turn in teeth and whatnot. I imagine there's quite a bit of data that could be gleaned from some of that information that they're already collecting, I, uh, at least for the animals that live around here. Um, I realize we're talking about people and whatnot, but I'm a sustenance hunter. Um, and I go up my creek about three miles. There's a big, huge clear cut up there. Well, when I, as a kid, my, my father taught me to hunt these clear cuts. Um, well, now the whole thing, it's just dead. There's nothing there. Couldn't find a bug. Couldn't find a snake. Couldn't find a little rabbit. Uh, definitely didn't see any deer. This is, uh, this is awful, I think. Um, Maybe they, maybe, maybe yeah, they could, maybe they could be involved just a little bit more as far as, as getting some data together, some animal tissue. Just yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. Hi, um, my name is Kathy. I actually live in Eugene and considered moving out in the country, but I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I have two sons. Um, they're very sensitive. Oh, 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 oh. Closer. Um, thanks. Sorry. I'm um, Katya, and I live in Eugene. And um, uh, we considered moving out to the country, but we're scared. Um, we keep reading about the spraying and the sicknesses and illnesses. Um, I myself had a lot of sensitivities. I grew up on a conventional farm. And my father used chlorinate when the Department of Agriculture told him back then that it was safe. Um, and we would be out in the fields as the spraying was going on. Um, and so I, my sons have a lot of allergies too. And recently, uh, we have neighbors in Eugene that use um, Roundup. And I smell, I smell the, the pesticide, especially in the spring, and recognize the smell. And um, just about three weeks ago, or right before the 4th of July, um, I smelled it again, real strong, um, but I went out to my backyard, I couldn't figure out where it was coming from, I felt powerless. Um, I was out there for most of the day, and so were my sons. Um, and then my sons started, uh, one of my sons in particular, uh, was having really bad reactions. I, I didn't know what it was at the time, nosebleeds, sometimes three or four, um, and this went on for five days and difficulty breathing. They already have apnea and um, digestive issues, and um, maybe it was something I passed down to them. But um, they're very sensitive, and I found out, I looked in the alley behind my house and noticed a big patch of dead, dead grass. And then went and talked to the neighbor, this was a few days later, and sure enough, she had used Roundup. And convinced me, I mean, tried to convince me that it was safe and that it wasn't what was causing the, the symptoms of my sons. And God forbid, I mean, had they been exposed to atrazine or 2,4-D, you know, that's supposed to be a more poisonous pesticide. Um, so I guess, I'm sorry, I think my memory is faltering for too many pesticides exposures, yeah. too. But, um, my, my question is, um, you know, I try to call the Department of Health in Eugene and um, the Department of Environmental Health or no, Services or different departments the of the government. The local health department? Yeah, know? yeah, to try to figure out who I can talk to about that, you know, to report their symptoms for one. Is that happening? Like, are all the people in Triangle, are their symptoms being, I'm sorry, are the symptoms being documented by the, by someone who's keeping track of what the pesticides are causing. I'm sorry, I'm <coughs> ignorant to that, but is that something that's happening? Is it all being documented, the health effects? Uh, oh, so let me uh, explain how... Uh, I mean, can I go somewhere and report what yes, my sons can. and myself... I experienced yes, major headaches and pain in my sides, too. Yes, you can. 
Um, you have a couple of different ways to do it. You can call us directly. Um, the pesticide exposure safety and tracking program is also in uh, the section that I manage. And um, they will ask you for um, information about uh, what was the circumstance, do you know what was used, did you see a physician, and I would recommend if you did see a physician that you let the physician know that you think that there may have been an exposure and if there's any testing that the physician could do. One of the things that's true is that medical schools notoriously are bad about teaching new doctors about environmental exposures. They tend to think about infectious diseases. Yeah, and can't go to the doctor about this. Right. So, um, and so sometimes they need to be prompted. You know, if you think this has been happening, they could, there might be some, some tests that they could run to, to determine. Because one of the things that um, we count on, again, our data, is information. So you can call, um, you can call directly to our office, or you could call the Poison can Center. You tell me again what you're doing. It's the gonna... Pesticide Exposure Safety and Tracking Program. Okay. Um, Justin Waltz is the coordinator for that program. Mm -hmm. Um, and what's your phone number? You can get you can call my phone number, which is nine seven one six seven three one one three nine, and I'll I'll just get you over to Justin because he's he's that's part of what he does is he collects that information. Uh -huh. The other way that you can do it is you can call the Poison Control Center, and mm -hmm. we get all of the reports from the Poison Control Center. And once mm -hmm. we get alerted from the Poison Control Center, then it starts our process. So uh, you can either do it directly or through the Poison. Center. I guess my other question is, I agree with um, a lot of people here that there shouldn't even be a buffer zone. <laughs> um, these pesticides should be banned. Yeah. And um, uh, have a law that requires people, or at least, at the very least, to have a law that requires people to inform their neighbors of, of the pesticides. I just wanted to say that I agree with that, and I would <laughs> urge, that, uh, urge for that to happen. Um, and I have a question for Elizabeth. You mentioned that um, that the, 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 that the pesticides don't sequester and fatty fat. Can you tell me where you where got that? Inf I mean, what study can I read that assures me that that doesn't happen and how? I can't, I can't name a specific study. So, I, I mean, I, not, not from memory, because it's not yeah. true. <laughs> well, you know, you guys can can choose to believe what you want. So you can I'm, email I'm it to me though if I give you my information? Or email if, you, if, yeah, if you give me your information, I'll, I'll find some information. And, and um, and I mean, when, I, when, I, when, I, you know, when I saw the urine data, I saw it was atrazine and 2,4-D, the first thing that pops into my head is, how long does that last in the body? So I started looking up some information. Which fine. And I'm going from Where memory now. Uh, they didn't memorize this. So if I give you my email, that's why I said they need us. Yeah, and, or if you want, you know, you can contact, send me an email, and I okay. will look it up for you. In, in fairness to Elizabeth, what she's reporting is accurate in that Dr. Barr, who conduct, conducted the study, was quoted in the newspaper article as saying, this evidence joins a new growing body of evidence that indicates that they are actually stored in the body yeah. fat, and then the article went on to say that was previously unknown. So yeah. your information was right, but there appears to be a new growing body. No, of and you know we're scientists; we don't know it all. Uh, you know it's important for us to admit that we don't know it all, um, and we're always going to be learning. That's why I do this job. I go in to work and I learn something new every day. But we're the guinea pigs that you're learning on. Then well, <laughs> Elizabeth, Elizabeth is one of the nice ones that's trying to help us out. No, but don't be too mean to her. That's so okay. Did you, so did, you have, did you have another question? I'm oh, sorry, Elizabeth. Well, you need my email. Yes. <laughs> it, it's an easy one. Alan dot Elizabeth okay. at APA dot G O V. And I think uh, many of us brought cards Okay. So um, we'll put them on the back of the table, or, or they may already be out there. I can't Thank answer you. Can I, from a scientific perspective, I can't answer like Elizabeth can, but I, I, I mentioned that uh, EPA does post on the internet all the scientific studies that we looked at and registering pesticides. So if you go to like epa.gov slash pesticides, it's probably a way to get the 2,4-D or atrazine and to see the scientific, scientific studies that, that, were, that you know, EPA looked at register that. The studies are always funded by the Yeah.
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.